Russia coordinates, 60 degrees north 90 degrees east, 60 degrees north 90 degrees east, 60, 90 Russia, Russian, TR. Russia, IPA, or the Russian Federation, Russian, TR. Rossiskaya Federatia, IPA, is a transcontinental country in Eastern Europe and North Asia. At 17,125,200 square kilometers, 6,612,100 square miles, Russia is, by a considerable margin, the largest country in the world by area, covering more than one-eighth of the Earth's inhabited land area, and the ninth most populous, with about 146.79 million people as of 2019, including Crimea. About 77% of the population live in the western, European part of the country. Russia's capital, Moscow, is one of the largest cities in the world and the second largest city in Europe. Other major cities include St. Petersburg, Novosibirsk, Yekaterinburg, and Nizhny Novgorod. Extending across the entirety of Northern Asia and much of Eastern Europe, Russia spans 11 time zones and incorporates a wide range of environments and landforms. From northwest to southeast, Russia shares land borders with Norway, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland, both with Kaliningrad Oblast, Belarus, Ukraine Georgia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, China, Mongolia, and North Korea. It shares maritime borders with Japan by the Sea of Okhotsk and the U.S. state of Alaska across the Bering Strait. However, Russia recognizes two more countries that border it, Abkhazia and South Ossetia, both of which are internationally recognized as parts of Georgia. The East Slavs emerged as a recognizable group in Europe between the 3rd and 8th centuries AD. Founded and ruled by a Varangian warrior elite and their descendants, the medieval state of Rus arose in the 9th century. In 988 it adopted Orthodox Christianity from the Byzantine Empire, beginning the synthesis of Byzantine and Slavic cultures that defined Russian culture for the next millennium. Rus ultimately disintegrated into a number of smaller states, most of the Rus lands were overrun by the Mongol invasion and became tributaries of the nomadic Golden Horde in the 13th century. The Grand Duchy of Moscow gradually reunified the surrounding Russian principalities and achieved independence from the Golden Horde. By the 18th century, the nation had greatly expanded through conquest, annexation, and exploration to become the Russian Empire, which was the third largest empire in history stretching from Poland on the west to Alaska on the east. That following the Russian Revolution, the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic became the largest and leading constituent of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, the world's first constitutionally socialist state. The Soviet Union played a decisive role in the Allied victory in World War II, and emerged as a recognized superpower and rival to the United States during the Cold War. The Soviet era saw some of the most significant technological achievements of the 20th century, including the world's first human-made satellite and the launching of the first humans in space. By the end of 1990, the Soviet Union had the world's second-largest economy, largest standing military in the world and the largest stockpile of weapons of mass destruction. Following the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, 12 independent republics emerged from the USSR, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Armenia, Azerbaijan Georgia, Kyrgyzstan, Moldova, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and the Baltic states regained independence, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, the Russian SFSR reconstituted itself as the Russian Federation and is recognized as the continuing legal personality and a successor of the Soviet Union. The political system of Russia is governed as a federal semi-presidential republic since 1993. Under Vladimir Putin's rule since 2000, Russia has been criticized by a number of human rights groups, outside observers and political dissidents for its authoritarian rule, unfair human rights record and violations, sham elections, military interventions in Syria and Ukraine, alleged interference in the 2016 American elections and repression of its homosexual population. His controversial actions in Ukraine led to sanctions following the annexation of Crimea in 2014. It is ranked 24 of 29 in the 2018 Nations in Transit report by the Freedom House and ranked 144th in the 2018 Democracy Index. Russia's economy ranks as the 12th largest by nominal GDP and 6th largest by purchasing power parity in 2018. Russia's extensive mineral and energy resources are the largest such reserves in the world, making it one of the leading producers of oil and natural gas globally.
The country is one of the five recognized nuclear weapons states and possesses the largest stockpile of weapons of mass destruction. Russia is a great power as well as a regional power and has been characterized as a potential superpower. It is a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council and an active global partner of ASEAN, as well as a member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization SCO, the G20, the Council of Europe, the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe OSCE, the International Investment Bank IIB, and the World Trade Organization WTO, as well as being the leading member of the Commonwealth of Independent States CIS, the Collective Security Treaty Organization, CSTO, and one of the five members of the Eurasian Economic Union, EEU, along with Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Kyrgyzstan. Etymology The name Russia is derived from Rus, a medieval state populated mostly by the East Slavs. However, this proper name became more prominent in the later history, and the country typically was called by its inhabitants, Ruskaya Zemlya which can be translated as Russian land or land of Rus. In order to distinguish this state from other states derived from it, it is denoted as Kievan Rus by modern historiography. The name Rus itself comes from the early medieval Rus people, Swedish merchants and warriors who relocated from across the Baltic Sea and founded a state centered on Novgorod that later became Kievan Rus. An old Latin version of the name Rus was Ruthenia, mostly applied to the western and southern regions of Rus that were adjacent to Catholic Europe. The current name of the country, Rosija, comes from the Byzantine Greek designation of the Rus, Rho Omega Sigma Sigma Alpha Rosia, spelled Rho Omega Sigma Alpha, Rosia pronounced, in modern Greek. The standard way to refer to citizens of Russia is Russians in English and Rosian, Russian, in Russian. There are two Russian words which are commonly translated into English as Russians. One is, Ruski, which most often means ethnic Russians. Another is, Rosian, which means citizens of Russia, regardless of ethnicity. Dot translations into other languages often do not distinguish these two groups. History Early history nomadic pastoralism developed in the Pontic Caspian steppe beginning in the Chalcolithic. In classical antiquity, the Pontic steppe was known as Scythia. Beginning in the 8th century BC, ancient Greek traders brought their civilization to the trade emporiums in Tanais and Phanagoria. Ancient Greek explorers, most notably Pythias, even went as far as modern-day Kaliningrad, on the Baltic Sea. Romans settled on the western part of the Caspian Sea, where their empire stretched towards the east. In the 3rd to 4th centuries AD a semi-legendary Gothic kingdom of Oym existed in southern Russia until it was overrun by Huns. Between the 3rd and 6th centuries AD, the Bosporan Kingdom, a Hellenistic polity which succeeded the Greek colonies, was also overwhelmed by nomadic invasions led by warlike tribes, such as the Huns and Eurasian Avars. A Turkic people, the Khazars, ruled the lower Volga basin steppes between the Caspian and Black Seas until the 10th century. The ancestors of modern Russians are the Slavic tribes, whose original home is thought by some scholars to have been the wooded areas of the Pinsk marshes. The East Slavs gradually settled Western Russia in two waves, one moving from Kiev toward present-day Suzdal and Morim and another from Polotsk toward Novgorod and Rostov. From the 7th century onwards, the East Slavs constituted the bulk of the population in Western Russia and assimilated the native Finno-Ugric peoples, including the Murya, the Muromians, and the Meshera. Kievan Rus the establishment of the first East Slavic states in the 9th century coincided with the arrival of Varangians, the traders, warriors and settlers from the Baltic Sea region. Primarily they were Vikings of Scandinavian origin, who ventured along the waterways extending from the eastern Baltic to the Black and Caspian Seas. According to the primary chronicle, a Varangian from Rus people, named Rurik, was elected ruler of Novgorod in 862. In 882, his successor Oleg ventured south and conquered Kiev, which had been previously paying tribute to the Khazars. Oleg, Rurik's son Igor and Igor's sons Vyatoslav subsequently subdued all local East Slavic tribes to Kievan rule, destroyed the Khazar Khaganate and launched several military expeditions to Byzantium and Persia. In the 10th to 11th centuries Kievan Rus became one of the largest and most prosperous states in Europe. The reigns of Vladimir the Great, 980-1015, and his son Yaroslav the Wise, 1019-1054, constitute the Golden Age of Kiev, which saw the acceptance of Orthodox Christianity from Byzantium and the creation of the first East Slavic written legal code, the Ryskaya Pravda. 
In the 11th and 12th centuries, constant incursions by nomadic Turkic tribes, such as the Kipchaks and the Pashinegs, caused a massive migration of Slavic populations to the safer, heavily forested regions of the north, particularly to the area known as Zalesi. The age of feudalism and decentralization was marked by constant infighting between members of the Rurik dynasty that ruled Kievan Rus collectively. Kiev's dominance waned, to the benefit of Vladimir Suzdal in the northeast, Novgorod Republic in the northwest and Galicia Volhynia in the southwest. Ultimately Kievan Rus disintegrated, with the final blow being the Mongol invasion of 1237-40 that resulted in the destruction of Kiev and the death of about half the population of Rus. The invading Mongol elite, together with their conquer Turkic subjects, Cumans, Kipchaks, Bulgars, became known as Tatars, forming the state of the Golden Horde, which pillaged the Russian principalities, the Mongols ruled the Cuman Kipchak Confederation and Volga Bulgaria, modern-day southern and central expanses of Russia, for over two centuries. Galicia Volhynia was eventually assimilated by the Kingdom of Poland, while the Mongol dominated Vladimir Suzdal and Novgorod Republic two regions on the periphery of Kiev, established the basis for the modern Russian nation. The Novgorod together with Pskov retained some degree of autonomy during the time of the Mongol yoke and were largely spared the atrocities that affected the rest of the country. Led by Prince Alexander Nevsky, Novgorodians repelled the invading Swedes in the Battle of the Neva in 1240, as well as the Germanic Crusaders in the Battle of the Ice in 1242, breaking their attempts to colonize the northern Rus. Grand Duchy of Moscow the most powerful state to eventually arise after the destruction of Kievan Rus was the Grand Duchy of Moscow, Muscovy in the Western Chronicles, initially a part of Vladimir Suzdal. While still under the domain of the Mongol Tatars and with their connivance, Moscow began to assert its influence in the Central Rus in the early 14th century, gradually becoming the leading force in the process of the Ruslands reunification and expansion of Russia. Moscow's last rival, the Novgorod Republic, prospered as the chief fur trade center and the easternmost port of the Hanseatic League. Times remained difficult, with frequent Mongol-Tatar raids. Agriculture suffered from the beginning of the Little Ice Age. As in the rest of Europe, plague was a frequent occurrence between 1350 and 1490. However, because of the lower population density and better hygiene, widespread practicing of banya, a wet steam bath, the death rate from plague was not as severe as in Western Europe and population numbers recovered by 1,500. Led by Prince Dmitry Donskoy of Moscow and helped by the Russian Orthodox Church, the United Army of Russian Principalities inflicted a milestone defeat on the Mongol Tatars in the Battle of Kulikovo in 1380. Moscow gradually absorbed the surrounding principalities, including formerly strong rivals such as Tver and Novgorod. Ivan III, the Great, finally threw off the control of the Golden Horde and consolidated the whole of central and northern Rus under Moscow's dominion. He was also the first to take the title Grand Duke of all the Russias. After the fall of Constantinople in 1453, Moscow claimed succession to the legacy of the Eastern Roman Empire. Ivan III married Sophia Palaiologina, the niece of the last Byzantine Emperor Constantine XI, and made the Byzantine double-headed eagle his own, and eventually Russia's coat of arms. Tsardom of Russia. In development of the Third Rome ideas, the Grand Duke Ivan IV, the Terrible, was officially crowned first Tsar, Caesar, of Russia in 1547. The Tsar promulgated a new code of laws, Zudavnik of 1550, established the first Russian feudal representative body, Zemsky Sabr, and introduced local self management into the rural regions. During his long reign, Ivan the Terrible nearly doubled the already large Russian territory by annexing the three Tatar Khanates, parts of the disintegrated Golden Horde, Kazan and Astrakhan along the Volga River, and the Siberian Khanate in southwestern Siberia. Thus, by the end of the 16th century Russia was transformed into a multi-ethnic, multi-denominational and transcontinental state. However, the Tsardom was weakened by the long and unsuccessful Livonian War against the coalition of Poland, Lithuania and Sweden for access to the Baltic coast and sea trade. At the same time, the Tatars of the Crimean Khanate, the only remaining successor to the Golden Horde, continued to raid southern Russia. In an effort to restore the Volga Khanates, Crimeans and their Ottoman allies invaded central Russia and were even able to burn down parts of Moscow in 1571. But in the next year the large invading army was thoroughly defeated by Russians in the Battle of Molody, forever eliminating the threat of an Ottoman Crimean expansion into Russia. 
The slave raids of Crimeans, however, did not cease until the late 17th century though the construction of new fortification lines across southern Russia, such as the Great Abadi Line, constantly narrowed the area accessible to incursions. The death of Ivan's sons marked the end of the ancient Rurik dynasty in 1598, and in combination with the famine of 1600-103 led to civil war, the rule of pretenders, and foreign intervention during the time of troubles in the early 17th century. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth occupied parts of Russia, including Moscow. In 1612, the Poles were forced to retreat by the Russian Volunteer Corps, led by two national heroes, Merchant Kuzma Minyan and Prince Dmitry Pashersky. The Romanov dynasty acceded to the throne in 1613 by the decision of Zemsky Sopper, and the country started its gradual recovery from the crisis. Russia continued its territorial growth through the 17th century, which was the age of Cossacks. Cossacks were warriors organized into military communities, resembling pirates and pioneers of the New World. In 1648, the peasants of Ukraine joined the Zaporozhian Cossacks in rebellion against Poland-Lithuania during the Komelnitsky Uprising in reaction to the social and religious oppression they had been suffering under Polish rule. In 1654, the Ukrainian leader, Bodin Komelnitsky, offered to place Ukraine under the protection of the Russian Tsar. Alexei Alexei's acceptance of this offer led to another Russo-Polish war. Finally, Ukraine was split along the Dnieper River, leaving the western part, right bank Ukraine, under Polish rule and the eastern part, left bank Ukraine and Kiev, under Russian rule. Later, in 1670-71, the Don Cossacks led by Stanka Razin initiated a major uprising in the Volga region, but the Tsar's troops were successful in defeating the rebels. In the east, the rapid Russian exploration and colonization of the huge territories of Siberia was led mostly by Cossacks hunting for valuable furs and ivory. Russian explorers pushed eastward primarily along the Siberian river routes, and by the mid-17th century there were Russian settlements in eastern Siberia, on the Chukchi Peninsula, along the Amur River, and on the Pacific coast. In 1648, the Bering Strait between Asia and North America was passed for the first time by Fyodot Popov and Semyon Desnyov. Imperial Russia. Under Peter the Great, Russia was proclaimed an empire in 1721 and became recognized as a world power. Ruling from 1682 to 1725, Peter defeated Sweden in the Great Northern War, forcing it to cede West Karelia and Ingria, two regions lost by Russia in the time of troubles, as well as Esland and Livland, securing Russia's access to the sea and sea trade. On the Baltic Sea, Peter founded a new capital called St. Petersburg later known as Russia's window to Europe. Peter the Great's reforms brought considerable Western European cultural influences to Russia. The reign of Peter I's daughter Elizabeth in 1741-62 saw Russia's participation in the Seven Years' War, 1756-63. During this conflict Russia annexed East Prussia for a while and even took Berlin. However, upon Elizabeth's death, all these conquests were returned to the Kingdom of Prussia by pro-Prussian Peter III of Russia. Catherine II, the Great, who ruled in 1762-96, presided over the Age of Russian Enlightenment. She extended Russian political control over the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and incorporated most of its territories into Russia during the partitions of Poland, pushing the Russian frontier westward into Central Europe. In the south, after successful Russo-Turkish wars against Ottoman Turkey, Catherine advanced Russia's boundary to the Black Sea, defeating the Crimean Khanate. As a result of victories over Qajar Iran through the Russo-Persian Wars, by the first half of the 19th century Russia also made significant territorial gains in Transcaucasia and the North Caucasus, forcing the former to irrevocably cede what is nowadays Georgia, Dagestan, Azerbaijan and Armenia to Russia. This continued with Alexander I's 1801-25 resting of Finland from the weakened Kingdom of Sweden in 1809 and of Bessarabia from the Ottomans in 1812. At the same time, Russians colonized Alaska and even founded settlements in California, such as Fort Ross. In 1803-1806, the first Russian circumnavigation was made, later followed by other notable Russian sea exploration voyages. In 1820, a Russian expedition discovered the continent of Antarctica. In alliances with various European countries, Russia fought against Napoleon's France. The French invasion of Russia at the height of Napoleon's power in 1812 reached Moscow, 
but eventually failed miserably as the obstinate resistance in combination with the bitterly cold Russian winter led to a disastrous defeat of invaders, in which more than 95% of the pan-European Grand Armée perished. Led by Mikhail Kutuzov and Barclay de Tolly, the Russian army ousted Napoleon from the country and drove through Europe in the War of the Sixth Coalition, finally entering Paris. Alexander I headed Russia's delegation at the Congress of Vienna that defined the map of post-Napoleonic Europe. The officers of the Napoleonic Wars brought ideas of liberalism back to Russia with them and attempted to curtail the Tsar's powers during the abortive Decembrist Revolt of 1825. At the end of the conservative reign of Nicholas I, 1825-55, a zenith period of Russia's power and influence in Europe was disrupted by defeat in the Crimean War. Between 1847 and 1851, about one million people died of Asiatic cholera. Nicholas's successor Alexander II, 1855-81 enacted significant changes in the country, including the Emancipation Reform of 1861. These great reforms spurred industrialization and modernized the Russian army, which had successfully liberated Bulgaria from Ottoman rule in the 1877-78 Russo-Turkish War. The late 19th century saw the rise of various socialist movements in Russia. Alexander II was killed in 1881 by revolutionary terrorists, and the reign of his son Alexander III, 1881-94 was less liberal but more peaceful. The last Russian emperor, Nicholas II, 1894-1917, was unable to prevent the events of the Russian Revolution of 1905, triggered by the unsuccessful Russo-Japanese War and the demonstration incident known as Bloody Sunday. The uprising was put down. But the government was forced to concede major reforms, Russian Constitution of 1906, including granting the freedoms of speech and assembly, the legalization of political parties, and the creation of an elected legislative body, the State Duma of the Russian Empire. The Stalibin agrarian reform led to a massive peasant migration and settlement into Siberia. More than 4 million settlers arrived in that region between 1906 and 1914. February Revolution and Russian Republic in 1914, Russia entered World War I in response to Austria-Hungary's declaration of war on Russia's ally Serbia, and fought across multiple fronts while isolated from its Triple Entente allies. In 1916, the Brusilov offensive of the Russian army almost completely destroyed the military of Austria-Hungary. However, the already existing public distrust of the regime was deepened by the rising costs of war, high casualties, and rumors of corruption and treason. All this formed the climate for the Russian Revolution of 1917, carried out in two major acts. The February Revolution forced Nicholas II to abdicate, he and his family were imprisoned and later executed in Yekaterinburg during the Russian Civil War. The monarchy was replaced by a shaky coalition of political parties that declared itself the provisional government. On 1 September, 14, 1917, upon a decree of the provisional government, the Russian Republic was proclaimed. On 6 January, 19, 1918, the Russian Constituent Assembly declared Russia a democratic federal republic, thus ratifying the provisional government's decision. The next day the Constituent Assembly was dissolved by the All-Russian Central Executive Committee. Soviet Russia and Civil War An alternative socialist establishment coexisted, the Petrograd Soviet, wielding power through the democratically elected councils of workers and peasants, called Soviets. The rule of the new authorities only aggravated the crisis in the country, instead of resolving it. Eventually, the October Revolution, led by Bolshevik leader Vladimir Lenin, overthrew the provisional government and gave full governing power to the Soviets, leading to the creation of the world's first socialist state. Following the October Revolution, a civil war broke out between the anti-communist white movement and the new Soviet regime with its Red Army. Bolshevist Russia lost its Ukrainian, Polish, Baltic, and Finnish territories by signing the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk that concluded hostilities with the Central Powers of World War I. The Allied Powers launched an unsuccessful military intervention in support of anti-communist forces. In the meantime both the Bolsheviks and White Movement carried out campaigns of deportations and executions against each other, known respectively as the Red Terror and White Terror. By the end of the Civil War, Russia's economy and infrastructure were heavily damaged. There were an estimated 7 to 12 million casualties during the war, mostly civilians. Millions became white emigres, and the Russian famine of 1921-22 claimed up to 5 million victims. Soviet Union The Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic, 
called Russian Socialist Federative Soviet Republic at the time, together with the Ukrainian, Bielorussian, and Transcaucasian Soviet Socialist Republics, formed the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR, or Soviet Union, on December 30, 1922. Out of the 15 republics that would make up the USSR, the largest in size and over half of the total USSR population was the Russian SFSR, which came to dominate the Union for its entire 69-year history. Following Lenin's death in 1924, a Troika was designated to govern the Soviet Union. However, Joseph Stalin, an elected general secretary of the Communist Party, managed to suppress all opposition groups within the party and consolidate power in his hands. Leon Trotsky, the main proponent of world revolution, was exiled from the Soviet Union in 1929, and Stalin's idea of socialism in one country became the primary line. Doubt the continued internal struggle in the Bolshevik party culminated in the Great Purge, a period of mass repressions in 1937-38, during which hundreds of thousands of people were executed, including original party members and military leaders accused of coup d'etat plots. Under Stalin's leadership, the government launched a command economy, industrialization of the largely rural country, and collectivization of its agriculture. During this period of rapid economic and social change, millions of people were sent to penal labor camps, including many political convicts for their opposition to Stalin's rule, millions were deported and exiled to remote areas of the Soviet Union. The transitional disorganization of the country's agriculture, combined with the harsh state policies and a drought, led to the Soviet famine of 1932 to 1933, which killed between 2 and 3 million people in the Russian SFSR. The Soviet Union made the costly transformation from a largely agrarian economy to a major industrial powerhouse in a short span of time. That under the doctrine of state atheism in the Soviet Union, there was a government-sponsored program of forced conversion to atheism conducted by communists. The communist regime targeted religions based on state interests, and while most organized religions were never outlawed, religious property was confiscated, believers were harassed, and religion was ridiculed while atheism was propagated in schools. In 1925 the government founded the League of Militant Atheists to intensify the persecution. Accordingly, although personal expressions of religious faith were not explicitly banned, a strong sense of social stigma was imposed on them by the official structures and mass media and it was generally considered unacceptable for members of certain professions, teachers, state bureaucrats, soldiers, to be openly religious. As for the Russian Orthodox Church, Soviet authorities sought to control it and, in times of national crisis, to exploit it for the regime's own purposes, but their ultimate goal was to eliminate it. That during the first five years of Soviet power, the Bolsheviks executed 28 Russian Orthodox bishops and over 1,200 Russian Orthodox priests. Many others were imprisoned or exiled. Believers were harassed and persecuted. Most seminaries were closed, and the publication of most religious material was prohibited. By 1941 only 500 churches remained open out of about 54,000 in existence prior to World War I. World War II the appeasement policy of Great Britain and France towards Adolf Hitler's annexation of Austria and Czechoslovakia did not stem an increase in the power of Nazi Germany. Around the same time, the Third Reich allied with the Empire of Japan, a rival of the USSR in the Far East and an open enemy of the USSR in the Soviet-Japanese border wars in 1938-39. In August 1939, the Soviet government decided to improve relations with Germany by concluding the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact pledging non-aggression between the two countries and dividing Eastern Europe into their respective spheres of influence. While Hitler conquered Poland and France and other countries acted on a single front at the start of World War II, the USSR was able to build up its military and occupy the western Ukraine, Hertz region and northern Bukovina as a result of the Soviet invasion of Poland, the Winter War, the occupation of the Baltic states and Soviet occupation of Bessarabia and northern Bukovina. On June 22, 1941, Nazi Germany broke the non-aggression treaty and invaded the Soviet Union with the largest and most powerful invasion force in human history, opening the largest theater of World War II. The Nazi hunger plan foresaw the extinction of industry as well as a great part of the population. Nearly three million Soviet POWs in German captivity were murdered in just eight months of 1941-42. Although the German army had considerable early success, their attack was halted in the Battle of Moscow. Subsequently, the Germans were dealt major defeats first at the Battle of Stalingrad in the winter of 1942-43, 
and then in the Battle of Kursk in the summer of 1943. Another German failure was the Siege of Leningrad, in which the city was fully blockaded on land between 1941 and 1944 by German and Finnish forces, and suffered starvation and more than a million deaths, but never surrendered. Under Stalin's administration and the leadership of such commanders as Georgi Zhukov and Konstantin Rokossovsky, Soviet forces took Eastern Europe in 1944-45 and captured Berlin in May 1945. In August 1945 the Soviet army ousted the Japanese from China's Manchukuo in North Korea, contributing to the Allied victory over Japan. The 1941-45 period of World War II is known in Russia as the Great Patriotic War. The Soviet Union together with the United States, the United Kingdom and China were considered as the big four of Allied powers in World War II and later became the Four Policemen which was the foundation of the United Nations Security Council. During this war, which included many of the most lethal battle operations in human history, Soviet civilian and military death were about 27 million, accounting for about a third of all World War II casualties. Doubt the full demographic loss to the Soviet peoples was even greater. The Soviet economy and infrastructure suffered massive devastation which caused the Soviet famine of 1946-47, but the Soviet Union emerged as an acknowledged military superpower on the continent. The Soviet rear was also badly damaged by the German invasion. Luftwaffe bombed the cities of the Soviet Union from the air. Gorky suffered the most from the bombing. This city was the main industrial center of the USSR and was located near the Moscow defense zone. The bombing of the Volga capital destroyed the largest automobile plant gas. This plant supplied tanks for the front. Whole residential areas and other large factories of the city were destroyed. From 1941 to 1943, German pilots bombed different areas of the city. This bombardment is comparable to the London Blitz. Some damage remained until this time. Cold War after the war, Eastern and Central Europe including East Germany and part of Austria was occupied by Red Army according to the Potsdam Conference. Doubt dependent socialist governments were installed in the Eastern Bloc satellite states. Becoming the world's second nuclear weapons power, the USSR established the Warsaw Pact alliance and entered into a struggle for global dominance, known as the Cold War, with the United States and NATO. The Soviet Union supported revolutionary movements across the world, including the newly formed People's Republic of China, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and, later on, the Republic of Cuba. Significant amounts of Soviet resources were allocated in aid to the other socialist states. After Stalin's death and a short period of collective rule, the new leader Nikita Khrushchev denounced the cult of personality of Stalin and launched the policy of de-Stalinization. The penal labor system was reformed and many prisoners were released and rehabilitated, many of them posthumously. The general easement of repressive policies became known later as the Khrushchev Thaw. At the same time, tensions with the United States heightened when the two rivals clashed over the deployment of the United States Jupiter missiles in Turkey and Soviet missiles in Cuba. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched the world's first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, thus starting the space age. Russia's cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to orbit the Earth, aboard the Vostok-1 manned spacecraft on April 12, 1961. Following the ousting of Khrushchev in 1964, another period of collective rule ensued, until Leonid Brezhnev became the leader. The era of the 1970s and the early 1980s was later designated as the era of stagnation, a period when economic growth slowed and social policies became static. The 1965 Kosygin reform aimed for partial decentralization of the Soviet economy and shifted the emphasis from heavy industry and weapons to light industry and consumer goods but was stifled by the conservative communist leadership. In 1979, after a communist-led revolution in Afghanistan, Soviet forces entered that country. The occupation drained economic resources and dragged on without achieving meaningful political results. Ultimately. The Soviet army was withdrawn from Afghanistan in 1989 due to international opposition, persistent anti-Soviet guerrilla warfare, and a lack of support by Soviet citizens. From 1985 onwards, the last Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev, who sought to enact liberal reforms in the Soviet system, introduced the policies of glasnost, openness, and perestroika, restructuring, in an attempt to end the period of economic stagnation and to democratize the government. This, however, led to the rise of strong nationalist and separatist movements. Prior to 1991, 
The Soviet economy was the second largest in the world, but during its last years it was afflicted by shortages of goods in grocery stores, huge budget deficits, and explosive growth in the money supply leading to inflation. By 1991, economic and political turmoil began to boil over, as the Baltic states chose to secede from the Soviet Union. On 17 March, a referendum was held, in which the vast majority of participating citizens voted in favor of changing the Soviet Union into a renewed federation. In August 1991, a coup d'état attempt by members of Gorbachev's government, directed against Gorbachev and aimed at preserving the Soviet Union, instead led to the end of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. On December 25, 1991, the USSR was dissolved into 15 post-Soviet states. Post-Soviet Russia, 1991 present. In June 1991, Boris Yeltsin became the first directly elected president in Russian history when he was elected president of the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic, which became the independent Russian Federation in December of that year. During and after the disintegration of the Soviet Union, wide-ranging reforms including privatization and market and trade liberalization were undertaken, including radical changes along the lines of shock therapy as recommended by the United States and the International Monetary Fund. All this resulted in a major economic crisis, characterized by a 50% decline in both GDP and industrial output between 1990 and 1995. The privatization largely shifted control of enterprises from state agencies to individuals with inside connections in the government. Many of the newly rich moved billions in cash and assets outside of the country in an enormous capital flight. The depression of the economy led to the collapse of social services, the birth rate plummeted while the death rate skyrocketed. Millions plunged into poverty, from a level of 1.5% in the late Soviet era to 39-49% by mid-1993. The 1990s saw extreme corruption and lawlessness, the rise of criminal gangs and violent crime. The 1990s were plagued by armed conflicts in the North Caucasus, both local ethnic skirmishes and separatist Islamist insurrections. From the time Chechen separatists declared independence in the early 1990s, an intermittent guerrilla war has been fought between the rebel groups and the Russian military. Terrorist attacks against civilians carried out by separatists, most notably the Moscow Theater hostage crisis and Beslan school siege, caused hundreds of deaths and drew worldwide attention. Russia took up the responsibility for settling the USSR's external debts, even though its population made up just half of the population of the USSR at the time of its dissolution. In 1992, most consumer price controls were eliminated, causing extreme inflation and significantly devaluing the ruble. With a devalued ruble, the Russian government struggled to pay back its debts to internal debtors, as well as international institutions like the International Monetary Fund. Despite significant attempts at economic restructuring, Russia's debt outpaced GDP growth. High budget deficits coupled with increasing capital flight and inability to pay back debts caused the 1998 Russian financial crisis and resulted in a further GDP decline. On December 31, 1999, President Yeltsin unexpectedly resigned, handing the post to the recently appointed Prime Minister, Vladimir Putin, who then won the 2000 presidential election. Putin suppressed the Chechen insurgency although sporadic violence still occurs throughout the Northern Caucasus. High oil prices and the initially weak currency followed by increasing domestic demand, consumption, and investments helped the economy grow at an average of 7% per year from 1998 to 2008, improving the standard of living and increasing Russia's influence on the world stage. Following the world economic crisis of 2008 and a subsequent drop in oil prices, Russia's economy stagnated and poverty again started to rise until 2017 when, after the prolonged recession, Russia's economy began to grow again, supported by stronger global growth, higher oil prices, and solid macro fundamentals. While many reforms made during the Putin presidency have been generally criticized by Western nations as undemocratic, Putin's leadership over the return of order, stability, and progress has won him widespread admiration in Russia. On March 2, 2008, Dmitry Medvedev was elected president of Russia while Putin became prime minister. Putin returned to the presidency following the 2012 presidential elections, and Medvedev was appointed prime minister. This quick succession in leadership change was coined tan democracy by outside media. Some critics claimed that the leadership change was superficial, and that Putin remained as the decision-making force in the Russian government. 
Within the context of the ongoing Russia-Ukraine gas dispute in early January 2009, Nikolai Petrov, an analyst with the Carnegie Moscow Center said, What we see right now is the dominant role of Putin. We see him as a real head of state, this is not surprising. We are still living in Putin's Russia. Some Russian political analysts and commentators viewed the political power as truly tandem between Medvedev and Putin. Prior to the 2008 election, political scientists Gleb Pavlovsky and Stanislav Belkovsky discussed the future configuration of power. According to Mr. Pavlovsky, people would be very suited with the option of the union of Putin and Medvedev similar to the two consuls of Rome. Belkovsky called Medvedev president of a dream referring to the early 1990s when people ostensibly dreamed of the time they would live without the stranglehold of ubiquitous ideology, and a common person would become the head of the state. In 2014, after President Viktor Yanukovych of Ukraine fled as a result of a revolution, Putin requested and received authorization from the Russian parliament to deploy Russian troops to Ukraine. Following a Crimean referendum in which separation was favored by a large majority of voters, the Russian leadership announced the accession of Crimea into the Russian Federation, though this and the referendum that preceded it were not accepted internationally. Da on 27 March the United Nations General Assembly voted in favor of a non-binding resolution opposing the Russian annexation of Crimea by a vote of 100 member states in favor, 11 against and 58 abstentions. In September 2015, Russia started military intervention in the Syrian civil war, consisting of airstrikes against militant groups of the Islamic State, Al-Nusra Front, Al-Qaeda in the Levant, and the Army of Conquest. Politics Governance According to the Constitution of Russia, the country is an asymmetric federation and semi-presidential republic, wherein the president is the head of state and the prime minister is the head of government. The Russian Federation is fundamentally structured as a multi-party representative democracy, with a federal government composed of three branches. The president is elected by popular vote for a six-year term, eligible for a second term, but not for a third consecutive term. Ministries of the government are composed of the premier and his deputies, ministers, and selected other individuals, all are appointed by the president on the recommendation of the prime minister, whereas the appointment of the latter requires the consent of the state Duma. That leading political parties in Russia include United Russia, the Communist Party, the Liberal Democratic Party, and Ajust Russia. In 2017, Russia was ranked as 135th of 167 countries in the Democracy Index, compiled by the Economist Intelligence Unit, while the World Justice Project, as of 2014, ranked Russia 80th of 99 countries surveyed in terms of rule of law. Foreign Relations The Russian Federation is recognized in international law as a successor state of the former Soviet Union. Russia continues to implement the international commitments of the USSR and has assumed the USSR's permanent seat in the UN Security Council, membership in other international organizations, the rights and obligations under international treaties, and property and debts. Russia has a multifaceted foreign policy. As of 2009, it maintains diplomatic relations with 191 countries and has 144 embassies. The foreign policy is determined by the president and implemented by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia. That although it is the successor state to a former superpower, Russia is commonly accepted to be a great power. Russia is one of five permanent members of the UN Security Council. The country participates in the Quartet on the Middle East and the Six-Party Talks with North Korea. Russia is a member of the Council of Europe, US, and APEC. Russia usually takes a leading role in regional organizations such as the CIS, Eurasic, CSTO, and the SCO. Russia became the 39th member state of the Council of Europe in 1996. In 1998, Russia ratified the European Convention on Human Rights. The legal basis for EU relations with Russia is the Partnership and Cooperation Agreement, which came into force in 1997. The agreement recalls the party's shared respect for democracy and human rights, political and economic freedom and commitment to international peace and security. In May 2003, the EU and Russia agreed to reinforce their cooperation on the basis of common values and shared interests. Former President Vladimir Putin had advocated a strategic partnership with close integration in various dimensions including establishment of EU-Russia common spaces. From the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Russia has initially developed a friendlier relationship with the United States and NATO, however today, the trilateral relationship has significantly deteriorated due to several issues and conflicts between Russia and the Western countries. 
The NATO-Russia Council was established in 2002 to allow the United States, Russia and the 27 allies in NATO to work together as equal partners to pursue opportunities for joint collaboration. Russia maintains strong and positive relations with other SCO and BRICS countries. In recent years, the country has significantly strengthened bilateral ties with the People's Republic of China by signing the Treaty of Friendship as well as building the Trans-Siberian Oil Pipeline and Gas Pipeline from Siberia to China, and has since formed a special relationship with China. India is the largest customer of Russian military equipment and the two countries share extensive defense and strategic relations. An important aspect of Russia's relations with the West is the criticism of Russia's political system and human rights management, including LGBT rights, media freedom, and reports about killed journalists, by Western governments, the mass media and the leading democracy and human rights watchdogs. In particular, such organizations as Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch consider Russia to have not enough democratic attributes and to allow few political rights and civil liberties to its citizens. Freedom House, an international organization funded by the United States, ranks Russia as not free, citing carefully engineered elections and absence of debate. Russian authorities dismiss these claims and especially criticize Freedom House. The Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs has called the 2006 Freedom in the World Report prefabricated, stating that the human rights issues have been turned into a political weapon in particular by the United States. The ministry also claims that such organizations as Freedom House and Human Rights Watch use the same scheme of voluntary extrapolation of isolated facts that of course can be found in any country into dominant tendencies. Military The Russian military is divided into the ground forces, navy, and air force. There are also three independent arms of service, strategic missile troops, aerospace defense forces, and the airborne troops. As of 2017, the military comprised over 1 million active duty personnel, the fifth largest in the world. Additionally, there are over 2.5 million reservists, with the total number of reserve troops possibly being as high as 20 million. It is mandatory for all male citizens aged 18 to 27 to be drafted for a year of service in armed forces. Russia has the largest stockpile of nuclear weapons in the world the second-largest fleet of ballistic missile submarines, and the only modern strategic bomber force outside the United States. More than 90% of world's 14,000 nuclear weapons are owned by Russia and the United States. Russia's tank force is the largest in the world, while its surface navy and air force are among the largest. The country has a large and fully indigenous arms industry, producing most of its own military equipment with only a few types of weapons imported. It has been one of the world's top supplier of arms since 2001, accounting for around 30% of worldwide weapons sales and exporting weapons to about 80 countries. The Stockholm International Peace Research Institute CIPRI, found that Russia was the second biggest exporter of arms in 2010-14, increasing their exports by 37% from the period 2005 to 2009. In 2010-14, Russia delivered weapons to 56 states and to rebel forces in eastern Ukraine. The Russian government's official 2014 military budget is about 2.49 trillion rubles, approximately 69.3 billion US dollars, the third largest in the world behind the US and China. The official budget is set to rise to 3.03 trillion rubles, approximately 83.7 billion US dollars in 2015, and 3.36 trillion rubles, approximately 93.9 billion US dollars in 2016. However, Unofficial estimates put the budget significantly higher, for example the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute CIPRI, 2013 military expenditure database estimated Russia's military expenditure in 2012 at 90.749 billion US dollars. This estimate is an increase of more than 18 billion US dollars on CIPRI's estimate of the Russian military budget for 2011. 71.9 billion US dollars. As of 2014, Russia's military budget is higher than any other European nation. Political divisions. According to the Constitution, the country comprises 85 federal subjects, including the disputed Republic of Crimea and federal city of Sevastopol. In 1993, when the Constitution was adopted, there were 89 federal subjects listed, but later some of them were merged. These subjects have equal representation, two delegates each, in the Federation Council. However, they differ in the degree of autonomy they enjoy. Federal subjects are grouped into eight federal districts, each administered by an envoy appointed by the President of Russia. 
Unlike the federal subjects, the federal districts are not a subnational level of government, but are a level of administration of the federal government. Federal districts envoys serve as liaisons between the federal subjects and the federal government and are primarily responsible for overseeing the compliance of the federal subjects with the federal laws. Geography Russia is the largest country in the world, its total area is 17,075,200 square kilometers, 6,592,800 square miles. This makes it larger than the continents of Oceania, Europe, and Antarctica. It lies between latitudes 41 degrees and 82 degrees north, and longitudes 19 degrees east and 169 degrees west. Russia's territorial expansion was achieved largely in the late 16th century under the Cossack Yermak Timofeyevich during the reign of Ivan the Terrible, at a time when competing city-states in the western regions of Russia had banded together to form one country. Yermak mustered an army and pushed eastward where he conquered nearly all the lands once belonging to the Mongols, defeating their ruler, Khan Kuchum. Russia has a wide natural resource base, including major deposits of timber, petroleum, natural gas, coal, ores and other mineral resources. Topography The two most widely separated points in Russia are about 8,000 kilometers, 4,971 miles, apart along a geodesic line. These points are, a 60 kilometers, 37 miles, long Vistula spit the boundary with Poland separating the Gdansk Bay from the Vistula Lagoon and the most southeastern point of the Kuril Islands. The points which are farthest separated in longitude are 6,600 kilometers, 4,101 miles, apart along a geodesic line. These points are, in the west, the same spit on the boundary with Poland, and in the east, the Big Diomede Island. The Russian Federation spans 11 time zones. Most of Russia consists of vast stretches of plains that are predominantly steppe to the south and heavily forested to the north, with tundra along the northern coast. Russia possesses 10% of the world's arable land. Mountain ranges are found along the southern borders, such as the Caucasus, containing Mount Albras, which at 5,642 meters feet, is the highest point in both Russia and Europe, and the Altai, containing Mount Baluka, which at the 4,506 meters feet, is the highest point of Siberia outside of the Russian Far East, and in the eastern parts, such as the Verhyansk Range or the volcanoes of Kamchatka Peninsula, containing Klyuchevskaya Sopka which at the 4,750 meters 15,584 feet, is the highest active volcano in Eurasia as well as the highest point of Asian Russia. The Ural Mountains, rich in mineral resources, form a north-south range that divides Europe and Asia. Russia has an extensive coastline of over 37,000 kilometers 22,991 miles, along the Arctic and Pacific Oceans, as well as along the Baltic Sea, Sea of Azov, Black Sea, and Caspian Sea. The Barren Sea, White Sea, Kara Sea, Loptev Sea, East Siberian Sea, Chukchi Sea, Bering Sea, Sea of Okhotsk, and the Sea of Japan are linked to Russia via the Arctic and Pacific. Russia's major islands and archipelagos include Novaya Zimlya, the Franz Josef Land, the Severnaya Zimlya, the New Siberian Islands, Vrongola Island, the Kuril Islands, and Sakhalin. The Diomede Islands, one controlled by Russia, the other by the United States, are just 3 kilometers, 1.9 miles, apart, and Konasher Island is about 20 kilometers, 12.4 miles, from Hokkaido, Japan. Russia has thousands of rivers and inland bodies of water, providing it with one of the world's largest surface water resources. Its lakes contain approximately one quarter of the world's liquid fresh water. The largest and most prominent of Russia's bodies of fresh water is Lake Baikal, the world's deepest, purest, oldest and most capacious freshwater lake. Baikal alone contains over one-fifth of the world's fresh surface water. Other major lakes include Ladoga and Wanga, two of the largest lakes in Europe. Russia is second only to Brazil in volume of the total renewable water resources. Of the country's 100,000 rivers, the Volga is the most famous, not only because it is the longest river in Europe, but also because of its major role in Russian history. The Siberian rivers OB, Yenisei, Lena and Amor are among the longest rivers in the world. Climate The enormous size of Russia and the remoteness of many areas from the sea result in the dominance of the humid continental climate, which is prevalent in all parts of the country except for the tundra and the extreme southwest. 
mountains in the south obstruct the flow of warm air masses from the Indian Ocean, while the plain of the west and north makes the country open to Arctic and Atlantic influences. Most of northern European Russia and Siberia has a subarctic climate, with extremely severe winters in the inner regions of northeast Siberia, mostly the Sakhar Republic, where the northern pole of cold is located with the record low temperature of minus 71.2 degrees Celsius or minus 96.2 degrees Fahrenheit, and more moderate winters elsewhere. Both the strip of land along the shore of the Arctic Ocean and the Russian Arctic Islands have a polar climate. The coastal part of Krasnodar Krai on the Black Sea, most notably in Sochi, possesses a humid subtropical climate with mild and wet winters. In many regions of East Siberia and the Far East, winter is dry compared to summer, other parts of the country experience more even precipitation across seasons. Winter precipitation in most parts of the country usually falls as snow. The region along the lower Volga and Caspian Sea coast, as well as some areas of southernmost Siberia, possesses a semi-arid climate. Throughout much of the territory there are only two distinct seasons, winter and summer, as spring and autumn are usually brief periods of change between extremely low and extremely high temperatures. The coldest month is January, February on the coastline, the warmest is usually July. Great ranges of temperature are typical. In winter, temperatures get colder both from south to north and from west to east. Summers can be quite hot, even in Siberia. The continental interiors are the driest areas biodiversity. From north to south the East European Plain, also known as Russian Plain, is clad sequentially in Arctic tundra, coniferous forest, taiga, mixed and broadleaf forests, grassland, steppe, and semi-desert, fringing the Caspian Sea, as the changes in vegetation reflect the changes in climate. Siberia supports a similar sequence but is largely taiga. Russia has the world's largest forest reserves, known as the lungs of Europe second only to the Amazon rainforest in the amount of carbon dioxide it absorbs. There are 266 mammal species and 780 bird species in Russia. A total of 415 animal species have been included in the Red Data Book of the Russian Federation as of 1997 and are now protected. There are 28 UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Russia, 40 UNESCO Biosphere Reserves, 41 National Parks and 101 Nature Reserves. Economy Russia has an upper-middle-income mixed economy with enormous natural resources, particularly oil and natural gas. It has the 12th largest economy in the world by nominal GDP and the 6th largest by purchasing power parity PPP. Since the turn of the 21st century, higher domestic consumption and greater political stability have bolstered economic growth in Russia. The country ended 2008 with its ninth straight year of growth, but growth has slowed with a decline in the price of oil and gas. Real GDP per capita PPP, current international, was 19,840 in 2010. Growth was primarily driven by non-traded services and goods for the domestic market, as opposed to oil or mineral extraction and exports. The average nominal salary in Russia was $967 per month in early 2013, up from $80 in 2000. In May 2016 the average nominal monthly wages fell below $450 per month and tax on the income of individuals is payable at the rate of 13% on most incomes. Approximately 19.2 million of Russians lived below the national poverty line in 2016, significantly up from 16.1 million in 2015. Unemployment in Russia was 5.4% in 2014, down from about 12.4% in 1999. Officially, about 20-25% to of the Russian population is categorized as middle class, however some economists and sociologists think this figure is inflated and the real fraction is about 7%. After the United States, the European Union and other countries imposed economic sanctions after the annexation of Crimea and a collapse in oil prices, the proportion of middle class could decrease drastically. Oil, natural gas, metals, and timber account for more than 80% of Russian exports abroad. Since 2003, the exports of natural resources started decreasing in economic importance as the internal market strengthened considerably. As of 2012 the oil and gas sector accounted for 16% of GDP, 52% of federal budget revenues and over 80% of total exports. Oil export earnings allowed Russia to increase its foreign reserves from $12 billion in 1999 to $597.3 billion on August 1, 2008. As of April 2017, foreign reserves in Russia fell to 332 billion US dollars.
the macroeconomic policy under Finance Minister Alexei Kudrin was prudent and sound, with excess income being stored in the Stabilization Fund of Russia. In 2006, Russia repaid most of its formerly massive debts, leaving it with one of the lowest foreign debts among major economies. The Stabilization Fund helped Russia to come out of the global financial crisis in a much better state than many experts had expected. A simpler, more streamlined tax code adopted in 2001 reduced the tax burden on people and dramatically increased state revenue. Russia has a flat tax rate of 13%. This ranks it as the country with the second most attractive personal tax system for single managers in the world after the United Arab Emirates. According to Bloomberg, Russia is considered well ahead of most other resource-rich countries in its economic development, with a long tradition of education, science, and industry. The country has a higher proportion of higher education graduates than any other country in Eurasia. The economic development of the country has been uneven geographically with the Moscow region contributing a very large share of the country's GDP. Inequality of household income and wealth has also been noted, with Credit Suisse finding Russian wealth distribution so much more extreme than other countries studied it deserves to be placed in a separate category. Another problem is modernization of infrastructure, aging and inadequate after years of being neglected in the 1990s. The government has said $1 trillion will be invested in development of infrastructure by 2020. In December 2011, Russia was approved as a member of the World Trade Organization after 18 years of dialogue, allowing it a greater access to overseas markets. Some analysts estimate that WTO membership could bring the Russian economy a bounce of up to 3% annually. Russia ranks as the second most corrupt country in Europe, after Ukraine, according to the Corruption Perceptions Index. The Norwegian Russian Chamber of Commerce also states that eruption is one of the biggest problems both Russian and international companies have to deal with. Corruption in Russia is perceived as a significant problem impacting all aspects of life, including public administration, law enforcement, healthcare and education. The phenomenon of corruption is strongly established in the historical model of public governance in Russia and attributed to general weakness of rule of law in Russia. According to Transparency International's Corruption Perceptions Index, Russia ranked 138th with a score of 28 out of 100 in 2018. The Russian Central Bank announced plans in 2013 to free flow the Russian ruble in 2015. According to a stress test conducted by the central bank Russian financial system would be able to handle a currency decline of 25% to 30% without major central bank interference. However, the Russian economy began stagnating in late 2013 and in combination with the war in Donbass is in danger of entering stagflation, slow growth and high inflation. The recent decline in the Russian ruble has increased the costs for Russian companies to make interest payments on debt issued in U.S. dollar or other foreign currencies that have strengthened against the ruble, thus it costs Russian companies more of their ruble-denominated revenue to repay their debt holders in dollars or other foreign currencies. As of March 2016, the ruble was devalued more than 50% since July 2014. Moreover, after bringing inflation down to 3.6% in 2012, the lowest rate since gaining independence from the Soviet Union, inflation in Russia jumped to nearly 7.5% in 2014, causing the central bank to increase its lending rate to 8% from 5.5% in 2013. In an October 2014 article in Bloomberg Business Week, it was reported that Russia had significantly started shifting its economy towards China in response to increasing financial tensions following its annexation of Crimea and subsequent Western economic sanctions. Energy In recent years, Russia has frequently been described in the media as an energy superpower. The country has the world's largest natural gas reserves, the eighth largest oil reserves, and the second largest coal reserves. Russia is the world's leading natural gas exporter and second largest natural gas producer, while also the largest oil exporter and the largest oil producer. Russia is the third largest electricity producer in the world and the fifth largest renewable energy producer, the latter because of the well-developed hydroelectricity production in the country. Large cascades of hydropower plants are built in European Russia along big rivers like the Volga. The Asian part of Russia also features a number of major hydropower stations, however, the gigantic hydroelectric potential of Siberia and the Russian Far East largely remains unexploited. Russia was the first country to develop civilian nuclear power and to construct the world's first nuclear power plant. Currently the country is the fourth largest nuclear energy producer, 
with all nuclear power in Russia being managed by Rosatom State Corporation. Doubt the sector is rapidly developing, with the aim of increasing the total share of nuclear energy from current 16.9% to 23% by 2020. The Russian government plans to allocate 127 billion rubles, $5.42 billion, to a federal program dedicated to the next generation of nuclear energy technology. About 1 trillion rubles, $42.7 billion, is to be allocated from the federal budget to nuclear power and industry development before 2015. In May 2014 on a two-day trip to Shanghai, President Putin signed a deal on behalf of Gazprom for the Russian energy giant to supply China with 38 billion cubic meters of natural gas per year. Construction of the pipeline to facilitate the deal was agreed whereby Russia would contribute $55 billion to the cost, and China $22 billion, in what Putin described as the world's biggest construction project for the next four years. The natural gas would begin to flow sometime between 2018 and 2020 and would continue for 30 years at an ultimate cost to China of $400 billion. External Trade and Investment Russia recorded a trade surplus of 130 US dollars, 0.1 billion in 2017. Russia's trade balance recorded a surplus of 19.7 billion US dollars in October 2018, compared with a surplus of 10.1 billion US dollars in October 2017. The European Union is Russia's largest trading partner and Russia is the EU's fourth largest trading partner. 75% of foreign direct investment, FDI, stocks in Russia come from the EU. Reuters reported that U.S. companies generated more than $90 billion in revenue from Russia in 2017. According to the Alab, there are almost 3,000 American companies in Russia, and the U.S. is also the leader in terms of foreign companies in special economic zones, with 11 projects. Agriculture Russia's total area of cultivated land is estimated at 1,237,294 square kilometers. 477,722 square miles, the fourth largest in the world. From 1999 to 2009, Russia's agriculture grew steadily, and the country turned from a grain importer to the third largest grain exporter after the EU and the United States. The production of meat has grown from 6,813,000 tons in 1999 to 9,331,000 tons in 2008, and continues to grow. This restoration of agriculture was supported by a credit policy of the government, helping both individual farmers and large privatized corporate farms that once were Soviet Kolkhozes and which still own a significant share of agricultural land. While large farms concentrate mainly on grain production and husbandry products, small private household plots produce most of the country's potatoes, vegetables and fruits. Since Russia borders three oceans, the Atlantic, Arctic, and Pacific, Russian fishing fleets are a major world fish supplier. Russia captured 3,191,068 tons of fish in 2005. Both exports and imports of fish and sea products grew significantly in recent years, reaching $2,415 and $2,036 million, respectively, in 2008. Sprawling from the Baltic Sea to the Pacific Ocean, Russia has more than a fifth of the world's forests, which makes it the largest forest country in the world. However, according to a 2012 study by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and the Government of the Russian Federation, the considerable potential of Russian forests is underutilized and Russia's share of the global trade in forest products is less than 4%. Transport Railway transport in Russia is mostly under the control of the state-run Russian Railways monopoly. The company accounts for over 3.6% of Russia's GDP and handles 39% of the total freight traffic, including pipelines, and more than 42% of passenger traffic. The total length of common used railway tracks exceeds 85,500 kilometers, 53,127 miles, second only to the United States. Over 44,000 kilometers, 27,340 miles, of tracks are electrified which is the largest number in the world, and additionally there are more than 30,000 kilometers, 18,641 miles, of industrial non-common carrier lines. Railways in Russia, unlike in the most of the world, use broad gauge of 1,520 millimeters, 4 feet 11 and 27 30 seconds in, with the exception of 957 kilometers, 595 miles, on Sakhalin Island using narrow gauge of 1,067 millimeters, 3 feet 6 in. The most renowned railway in Russia is Trans-Siberian, Trans-Sib, 
spanning the record seven time zones and serving the longest single continuous services in the world, Moscow Vladivostok, 9,259 kilometers, 5,753 miles, Moscow Pyongyang, 10,267 kilometers, 6,380 miles, and Kiev Vladivostok, 11,085 kilometers, 6,888 miles. Dot. As of 2006 Russia had 933,000 kilometers of roads, of which 755,000 were paved. Some of these make up the Russian federal motorway system. With a large land area the road density is the lowest of all the G8 and BRIC countries. Much of Russia's inland waterways, which total 102,000 kilometers, 63,380 miles, are made up of natural rivers or lakes. In the European part of the country the network of channels connects the basins of major rivers. Russia's capital, Moscow, is sometimes called the Port of the Five Seas, because of its waterway connections to the Baltic, White, Caspian, Azov, and Black Seas. Major seaports of Russia include Rostovodon on the Azov Sea, Novorossiysk on the Black Sea, Astrakhan and Makishkala on the Caspian, Kaliningrad and St. Petersburg on the Baltic, Arkhangelsk on the White Sea. Murmansk on the Barents Sea, Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky and Vladivostok on the Pacific Ocean. In 2008 the country owned 1,448 merchant marine ships. The world's only fleet of nuclear-powered icebreakers advances the economic exploitation of the Arctic continental shelf of Russia and the development of sea trade through the Northern Sea Route between Europe and East Asia. By total length of pipelines Russia is second only to the United States. Currently many new pipeline projects are being realized, including North Stream and South Stream natural gas pipelines to Europe, and the Eastern Siberia, Pacific Ocean Oil Pipeline, ESPO, to the Russian Far East and China. Russia has 1,216 airports, the busiest being Sheremetyevo, Domodedovo, and Vnukovo in Moscow, and Pulkovo in St. Petersburg. Typically, major Russian cities have well-developed systems of public transport, with the most common varieties of exploited vehicles being bus, trolleybus and tram. Seven Russian cities, namely Moscow, St. Petersburg, Nizhny Novgorod, Novosibirsk, Samara, Yekaterinburg, and Kazan, have underground metros, while Volgograd features a metro tram. The total length of metros in Russia is 465.4 kilometers, 289.2 miles. Moscow Metro and St. Petersburg Metro are the oldest in Russia, opened in 1935 and 1955 respectively. These two are among the fastest and busiest metro systems in the world, and some of them are famous for rich decorations and unique designs of their stations, which is a common tradition in Russian metros and railways. Science and Technology Science and technology in Russia blossomed since the Age of Enlightenment. When Peter the Great founded the Russian Academy of Sciences in St. Petersburg State University, and polymath Mikhail Lomonosov established the Moscow State University, paving the way for a strong native tradition in learning and innovation. In the 19th and 20th centuries the country produced a large number of notable scientists and inventors. The Russian physics school began with Lomonosov who proposed the law of conservation of matter preceding the energy conservation law. Russian discoveries and inventions in physics include the electric arc, electrodynamical lenses law, space groups of crystals, photoelectric cell, superfluidity, Cherenkov radiation, electron paramagnetic resonance, heterotransistors and 3D holography. Lasers and masers were co-invented by Nikolai Basov and Alexander Prokhorov, while the idea of tokamak for controlled nuclear fusion was introduced by Igor Tom, Andrei Sakharov, and Lev Artsimovich leading eventually the modern international leader project, where Russia is a party. Since the time of Nikolai Lobachevsky, the Copernicus of geometry who pioneered the non-Euclidean geometry, and a prominent tutor Pafnuti Kepyshev, the Russian mathematical school became one of the most influential in the world. Kepyshev's students included Alexander Yapunov, who founded the modern stability theory, and Andrei Markov who invented the Markov chains. In the 20th century Soviet mathematicians, such as Andrei Kolmogorov, Israel Gelfand, and Sergei Sobolev, made major contributions to various areas of mathematics. Nine Soviet-slash-Russian mathematicians were awarded with the Fields Medal, a most prestigious award in mathematics. Recently Grigory Perelman was offered the first-ever Clay Millennium Prize Problems Award for his final proof of the Poincaré conjecture in 2002. 
Russian chemist Dmitry Mendeleev invented the periodic table, the main framework of modern chemistry. Alexander Butlerov was one of the creators of the theory of chemical structure, playing a central role in organic chemistry. That Russian biologists include Dmitry Ivanovsky who discovered viruses, Ivan Pavlov who was the first to experiment with the classical conditioning, and Ilya Meknikov who was a pioneer researcher of the immune system and probiotics. Many Russian scientists and inventors were emigres, like Igor Sikorsky, who built the first airliners and modern type helicopters, Vladimir Zworkin, often called the father of television, chemist Ilya Prigozhin, noted for his work on dissipative structures and complex systems, Nobel Prize winning economist Simon Kuznets and Vasily Leontiev, physicist Georgi Gamov, an author of the Big Bang Theory, and social scientist Peter M. Sorokin. Many foreigners worked in Russia for a long time like Leonard Euler and Alfred Nobel. Russian inventions include arc welding by Nikolai Benardos, further developed by Nikolai Slavyanov, Konstantin Krinov and other Russian engineers. Gleb Kotelnikov invented the knapsack parachute, while Evgeny Chertovsky introduced the pressure suit. Dat Alexander Ledigin and Pavel Yablochkov were pioneers of electric lighting, and Mikhail Dolivodobrovolsky introduced the first three-phase electric power systems, widely used today. Sergei Lebedev invented the first commercially viable and mass-produced type of synthetic rubber. The first ternary computer, Seton, was developed by Nikolai Brusensov. In the 20th century a number of prominent Soviet aerospace engineers, inspired by the fundamental works of Nikolai Zhukovsky, Sergei Triplegin and others, designed many hundreds of models of military and civilian aircraft and founded a number of KBs, construction bureaus that now constitute the bulk of Russian United Aircraft Corporation. Famous Russian aircraft include the Civilian 2 Series, Su and MiG fighter aircraft, Ka and Misery's helicopters. Many Russian aircraft models are on the list of most produced aircraft in history. Famous Russian battle tanks include T-34, the most heavily produced tank design of World War II, and further tanks of T-Series, including the most produced tank in history. T-54-55. The AK-47 and AK-74 by Mikhail Kalashnikov constitute the most widely used type of assault rifle throughout the world, so much so that more AK-type rifles have been manufactured than all other assault rifles combined. With all these achievements, however, since the late Soviet era Russia was lagging behind the West in a number of technologies, mostly those related to energy conservation and consumer goods production. The crisis of the 1990s led to the drastic reduction of the state support for science and a brain drain migration from Russia. In the 2000s, on the wave of a new economic boom, the situation in the Russian science and technology has improved, and the government launched a campaign aimed into modernization and innovation. Russian President Dmitry Medvedev formulated top priorities for the country's technological development. Currently Russia has completed the GLONASS satellite navigation system. The country is developing its own fifth-generation jet fighter and constructing the first serial mobile nuclear plant in the world. Space exploration Russian achievements in the field of space technology and space exploration are traced back to Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, the father of theoretical astronautics. His works had inspired leading Soviet rocket engineers, such as Sergei Kurilov, Valentin Glushko and many others who contributed to the success of the Soviet space program in the early stages of the space race and beyond. In 1957 the first Earth-orbiting artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, was launched. In 1961 the first human trip into space was successfully made by Yuri Gagarin. Many other Soviet and Russian space exploration records ensued, including the first spacewalk performed by Alexei Leonov. Luna 9 was the first spacecraft to land on the moon. Zon 5 brought the first turtlings, two tortoises and other life forms, to circumnavigate the moon, Venera 7 was the first to land on another planet, Venus, Mars 3 then the first to land on Mars, the first space exploration rover Lunokhod 1, and the first space station Salyut 1 and Mir. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, some government-funded space exploration programs, including the Buran Space Shuttle program, were cancelled or delayed while participation of the Russian space industry in commercial activities and international cooperation intensified. Nowadays Russia is the largest satellite launcher. After the United States Space Shuttle program ended in 2011, Soyuz rockets became the only provider of transport for astronauts at the International Space Station. Luna Glob is a Russian moon exploration program, 
with first planned mission launch in 2021. Roscosmos is also developing the Federation spacecraft, to replace the aging Soyuz, it could also conduct mission to lunar orbit as early as 2026. In February 2019, it was announced that Russia is intending to conduct its first crewed mission to land on the moon in 2031. Water supply and sanitation. In Russia, approximately 70% of drinking water comes from surface water and 30% from groundwater. In 2004, water supply systems had a total capacity of 90 million cubic meters a day. The average residential water use was 248 liters per capita per day. One fourth of the world's fresh surface and groundwater is located in Russia. The water utilities sector is one of the largest industries in Russia serving the entire Russian population. Corruption There are many different estimates of the actual cost of corruption. According to official government statistics from Rostat, the shadow economy occupied only 15% of Russia's GDP in 2011, and this included unreported salaries, to avoid taxes and social payments, and other types of tax evasion. According to Rostat's estimates, corruption in 2011 amounted to only 3.5 to 7% of GDP. In comparison, some independent experts maintain that corruption consumes as much as 25% of Russia's GDP. A World Bank report puts this figure at 48%. There is also an interesting shift in the main focus of bribery, whereas previously officials took bribes to shut their eyes to legal infractions, they now take them simply to perform their duties. Many experts admit that in recent years corruption in Russia has become a business. In the 1990s, businessmen had to pay different criminal groups to provide a krisha literally, a roof, i.e., protection. Nowadays, this protective function is performed by officials. Corrupt hierarchies characterize different sectors of the economy, including education. In the end, the Russian population pays for this corruption. For example, some experts believe that the rapid increases in tariffs for housing, water, gas and electricity, which significantly outpace the rate of inflation, are a direct result of high volumes of corruption at the highest levels. In the recent years the reaction to corruption has changed, starting from Putin's second term, very few corruption cases have been the subject of outrage. Putin's system is remarkable for its ubiquitous and open merging of the civil service and business, as well as its use of relatives, friends, and acquaintances to benefit from budgetary expenditures and take over state property. Corporate, property, and land rating is commonplace. On March 26, 2017, protests against alleged corruption in the federal Russian government took place simultaneously in many cities across the country. They were triggered by the lack of proper response from the Russian authorities to the published investigative film He Is Not Demon to You, which has garnered more than 20 million views on YouTube. In the 2018 results of the Corruption Perceptions Index by Transparency International, Russia ranked 138 out of 180 countries with a score of 28 out of 100, tying with Guinea, Iran, Lebanon, Mexico, and Papua New Guinea. Demographics Ethnic Russians comprise 81% of the country's population. The Russian Federation is also home to several sizable minorities. In all, 160 different other ethnic groups and indigenous peoples live within its borders. Although Russia's population is comparatively large, its density is low because of the country's enormous size. Population is densest in European Russia, near the Ural Mountains, and in southwest Siberia. 73% of the population lives in urban areas while 27% in rural ones. The results of the 2010 census show a total population of 142,856,536. Russia's population peaked at 148,689,000 in 1991, just before the dissolution of the Soviet Union. It began to experience a rapid decline starting in the mid-1990s. The decline has slowed to near stagnation in recent years because of reduced death rates, increased birth rates and increased immigration. In 2009, Russia recorded annual population growth for the first time in 15 years, with total growth of 10,500. The number of Russian emigrants steadily declined from 359,000 in 2000 to 32,000 in 2009. According to the UN, Russia's immigrant population is the third largest in the world, numbering 11.6 million. Ukraine, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Azerbaijan. Moldova and Kazakhstan were the leading countries of origin for immigrants to Russia. There are about 3 million Ukrainians living in Russia. 
196,000 migrants arrived to the Russian Federation in 2016, mostly from the ex-Soviet states. Russia is home to approximately 116 million ethnic Russians and about 20 million ethnic Russians live outside Russia in the former republics of the Soviet Union, mostly in Ukraine and Kazakhstan. The 2010 census recorded 81% of the population as ethnically Russian, and 19% as other ethnicities, 3.7% Tatars, 1.4% Ukrainians, 1.1% Bashkirs, 1% Chuvashes, 11.8% others and unspecified. According to the census, 84.93% of the Russian population belongs to European ethnic groups, Slavic, Germanic, Finnic other than Ugric, Greek, and others. This is a decline from the 2002, when they constituted for more than 86% of the population. Russia's birth rate is higher than that of most European countries, 13.3 births per 1,000 people in 2014 compared to the European Union average of 10.1 per 1,000, but its death rate is also substantially higher. In 2014, Russia's death rate was 13.1 per 1,000 people compared to the EU average of 9.7 per 1,000. The Russian Ministry of Health and Social Affairs predicted that by 2011 the death rate would equal the birth rate because of increase in fertility and decline in mortality. The government is implementing a number of programs designed to increase the birth rate and attract more migrants. Monthly government child assistance payments were doubled to 55 U.S. dollars, and a one-time payment of 9,200 U.S. dollars was offered to women who had a second child since 2007. In 2018 the average total fertility rate TFR, across Russia was 1.61 children per woman, below the replacement rate of 2.1, it remains considerably below the high of 7.44 children born per woman in 1908. In 2018 the median age of the Russian population was 39.8 years. In 2006, in a bid to compensate for the country's demographic decline, the Russian government started simplifying immigration laws and launched a state program for providing assistance to voluntary immigration of ethnic Russians from former Soviet republics. In 2009 Russia experienced its highest birth rate since the dissolution of the Soviet Union. In 2012, the birth rate increased again. Russia recorded 1,896,263 births, the highest number since 1990 and even exceeding annual births during the period 1967 to 1969, with a TFR of about 1.7, the highest since 1991. Source, Vital Statistics Table below. In August 2012, as the country saw its first demographic growth since the 1990s, President Putin declared that Russia's population could reach 146 million by 2025, mainly as a result of immigration. Largest Cities Ethnic Groups Russia is a multinational state with over 170 ethnic groups designated as nationalities, the populations of these groups vary enormously, from millions, for example, Russians and Tatars, to under 10,000, for example, Samis and Eskimo. Language Russia's 160 ethnic groups speak some 100 languages. According to the 2002 census, 142.6 million people speak Russian followed by Tatar with 5.3 million and Ukrainian with 1.8 million speakers. Russian is the only official state language, but the constitution gives the individual republics the right to establish their own state languages in addition to Russian. Despite its wide distribution, the Russian language is homogeneous throughout the country. Russian is the most geographically widespread language of Eurasia, as well as the most widely spoken Slavic language. It belongs to the Indo-European language family and is one of the living members of the East Slavic languages, the others being Belarusian and Ukrainian, and possibly Rusin. Written examples of Old East Slavic, Old Russian, are attested from the 10th century onwards. Russian is the second most used language on the Internet after English, one of two official languages aboard the International Space Station and is one of the six official languages of the UN. 35 languages are officially recognized in Russia in various regions by local governments. Religion Russians have practiced Orthodox Christianity since the 10th century. According to the historical traditions of the Orthodox Church, Christianity was first brought to the territory of modern Belarus, Russia and Ukraine by St. Andrew, the first apostle of Jesus Christ. Following the primary chronicle, the definitive Christianization of Kievan Rus dates from the year 988, 
the year is disputed, when Vladimir the Great was baptized in Chersonesus and proceeded to baptize his family and people in Kiev. The latter events are traditionally referred to as the Baptism of Rus, Russian, Ukrainian, in Russian and Ukrainian literature. Much of the Russian population, like other Slavic peoples, preserved for centuries a double belief, Diva Evry, in both indigenous religion and Orthodox Christianity. At the time of the 1917 revolution, the Russian Orthodox Church was deeply integrated into the autocratic state, enjoying official status. This was a significant factor that contributed to the Bolshevik attitude to religion and the steps they took to control it. Moreover, the Bolsheviks including many people with non-Russian and or non-Christian background, such as Vladimir Lenin, Leon Trotsky, Gregory Zinoviev, Lev Kamenev, and Gregory Sokolnikov, who were, at best, indifferent towards Christianity, and at worst hostile to it. The ideas of German philosopher Karl Marx were synthesized with Lenin's own political thought to form the Communist Party. Thus the USSR became one of the first communist states to proclaim, as an ideological objective, the elimination of religion and its replacement with universal atheism. The communist government ridiculed religions and their believers, and propagated atheism in schools. The confiscation of religious assets was often based on accusations of illegal accumulation of wealth. State atheism in the Soviet Union was known in Russian as Gossetism, and was based on the ideology of Marxism-Leninism, which consistently advocated has consistently advocated the control, suppression, and elimination of religion. Within about a year of the revolution, the state expropriated all church property, including the churches themselves, and in the period from 1922 to 1926, 28 Russian Orthodox bishops and more than 1,200 priests were killed. Many more were persecuted. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, there has been a renewal of religions in Russia, and among Slavs, various movements have emerged besides Christianity, including Rod Novary, Slavic native faith, Asianism, and other ethnic paganisms, Rorikism, Ringing Cedars Anastasianism, Hinduism, Siberian Shamanism or Tangrism, and other religions. In 2012, the research organization Srita, in cooperation with the 2010 Census and the Ministry of Justice, published the Arena Atlas, a detailed enumeration of religious populations and nationalities in Russia, based on a large sample country-wide survey. The results showed that 46.8% of Russians declared themselves Christians, including 41% Russian Orthodox, 1.5% simply Orthodox or members of non-Russian Orthodox churches. 4.1% unaffiliated Christians, and less than 1% for both old believers, Catholics, and Protestants, while 25% were spiritual but not religious, 13% were atheists, 6.5% were Muslims, 1.2% were followers of traditional religions honoring gods and ancestors, including Rod Novary, Tangrism and other ethnic religions, and half a percent were Buddhists, 0.1% were religious Jews and 0.1% were Hindus. According to various reports, the proportion of not religious people in Russia is between 16% and 48% of the population. According to recent studies, the proportion of atheists has significantly decreased over the decades after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Orthodox Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, and paganism, either preserved or revived, are recognized by law as Russia's traditional religions, marking the country's historical heritage. An estimated 95% of the registered Orthodox parishes belong to the Russian Orthodox Church while there are a number of smaller Orthodox churches. However, the vast majority of Orthodox believers do not attend church on a regular basis. Easter is the most popular religious holiday in Russia, celebrated by a large segment of the Russian population, including large numbers of those who are non-religious. More than three-quarters of the Russian population celebrate Easter by making traditional Easter cakes colored eggs and pasca. Islam is the second largest religion in Russia after Russian Orthodoxy. It is the traditional or predominant religion amongst some Caucasian ethnicities, notably the Chechens, the Ingush and the Circassians, and amongst some Turkic peoples, notably the Tatars and the Bashkirs. Buddhism is traditional in three republics of Russia, Buryatia, Tuva, and Kalmykia, the latter being the only region in Europe where Buddhism is the most practiced religion. In cultural and social affairs, Vladimir Putin has collaborated closely with the Russian Orthodox Church. Patriarch Kirill of Moscow, head of the church, endorsed his election in 2012. Stephen Myers reports, the church, 
once heavily repressed, had emerged from the Soviet collapse as one of the most respected institutions. Now Carroll led the faithful directly into an alliance with the state. Baptist minister Mark Woods provides specific examples of how the church under Patriarch Kirill of Moscow has backed the expansion of Russian power into Crimea and eastern Ukraine. The Holy Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church, at its session on October 15, 2018, severed ties with the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople. The decision was taken in response to the move made by the Patriarchate of Constantinople a few days prior that effectively ended the Moscow Patriarchate's jurisdiction over Ukraine and promised autocephaly to Ukraine. On April 26, 2017, for the first time, the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom classified Russia as one of the world's worst violators of religious liberty, recommending in its 2017 annual report that the U.S. government deem Russia a country of particular concern under the International Religious Freedom Act and negotiate for religious liberty. The report states, it is the sole state to have not only continually intensified its repression of religious freedom since Ashraf commenced monitoring it but also to have expanded its repressive policies, ranging from administrative harassment to arbitrary imprisonment to extrajudicial killing, are implemented in a fashion that is systematic, outgoing, and egregious. On April 4, 2017 UN Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Opinion and Expression David K., UN Special Rapporteur on Freedoms of Peaceful Assembly and Association Mina Kiai, and UN Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion and Belief Ahmed Shahid condemned Russia's treatment of Jehovah's Witnesses. Many other countries and international organizations have spoken out on Russia's religious abuses. Health The Russian Constitution guarantees free, universal health care for all its citizens. In practice, however, free health care is partially restricted because of mandatory registration. While Russia has more physicians, hospitals, and healthcare workers than almost any other country in the world on a per capita basis, since the dissolution of the Soviet Union the health of the Russian population has declined considerably as a result of social, economic, and lifestyle changes, the trend has been reversed only in the recent years, with average life expectancy having increased 5.2 years for males and 3.1 years for females between 2006 and 2014. Due to the outgoing Russian financial crisis since 2014, major cuts in health spending have resulted in a decline in the quality of service of the state health care system. About 40% of basic medical facilities have fewer staff than they are supposed to have, with others being closed down. Stop waiting times for treatment have increased, and patients have been forced to pay for more services that were previously free. As of 2014, the average life expectancy in Russia was 65.29 years for males and 76.49 years for females. The biggest factor contributing to the relatively low life expectancy for males is a high mortality rate among working age males. Deaths mostly occur from preventable causes, including alcohol poisoning, smoking, traffic accidents and violent crime. As a result, Russia has one of the world's most female biased sex ratios, with 0.859 males to every female. Education. Russia has the most college level or higher graduates in terms of percentage of population in the world, at 54%. Russia has a free education system, which is guaranteed for all citizens by the Constitution, however, entry to subsidized higher education is highly competitive. As a result of great emphasis on science and technology in education, Russian medical, mathematical, scientific, and aerospace research is generally of a high order. Since 1990, the 11-year school education has been introduced. Education in state-owned secondary schools is free. University-level education is free, with exceptions. A substantial share of students is enrolled for full pay. Many state institutions started to open commercial positions in the last years. The oldest and largest Russian universities are Moscow State University and St. Petersburg State University. In the 2000s, in order to create higher education and research institutions of comparable scale in Russian regions, the government launched a program of establishing federal universities, mostly by merging existing large regional universities and research institutes and providing them with a special funding. These new institutions include the Southern Federal University, Siberian Federal University, Kazan Volka Federal University, Northeastern Federal University, and Far Eastern Federal University. According to the 2018 QS World University Rankings, the highest-ranking Russian educational institution is Moscow State University, rated 95th in the world. Culture Folk culture and cuisine 
There are over 160 different ethnic groups and indigenous peoples in Russia. The country's vast cultural diversity spans ethnic Russians with their Slavic Orthodox traditions, Tatars and Bashkirs with their Turkic Muslim culture, Buddhist nomadic Buryats and Kalmyks, shamanistic peoples of the extreme north in Siberia, Highlanders of the northern Caucasus, and Finno-Ugric peoples of the Russian northwest and Volga region. Handicraft, like Dimkavo toy, Kokloma, Xil and Palik miniature represent an important aspect of Russian folk culture. Ethnic Russian clothes include kaftan, kasavorotka and dushanka for men, serifan and kokoshnik for women, with lopti and valenki as common shoes. The clothes of Cossacks from southern Russia include burka and papaha, which they share with the peoples of the northern Caucasus. Russian cuisine widely uses fish, caviar, poultry, mushrooms, berries, and honey. Crops of rye, wheat, barley, and millet provide the ingredients for various breads, pancakes and cereals, as well as for kvass, beer and vodka drinks. Top black bread is rather popular in Russia, compared to the rest of the world. Flavorful soups and stews include shchi, borscht, yuka, salyanka and okrashka. Smetana, a heavy sour cream, is often added to soups and salads. Broshki, blini and sirniki are native types of pancakes. Chicken Kiev, pelmeni and shashlik are popular meat dishes, the last two being of Tatar and Caucasus origin respectively. Other meat dishes include stuffed cabbage rolls, galiabtsi, usually filled with meat. Salads include olivier salad, vinaigrette and dressed herring. Russia's large number of ethnic groups have distinctive traditions regarding folk music. Typical ethnic Russian musical instruments are gusli, balalika, zalika, and garmashka. Folk music had a significant influence on Russian classical composers, and in modern times it is a source of inspiration for a number of popular folk bands, like Melnitsa. Russian folk songs, as well as patriotic Soviet songs, constitute the bulk of the repertoire of the world-renowned Red Army Choir and other popular ensembles. Dot. Russians have many traditions, including the washing in banya, a hot steam bath somewhat similar to sauna. Old Russian folklore takes its roots in the pagan Slavic religion. Many Russian fairy tales and epic bylinas were adapted for animation films, or for feature movies by the prominent directors like Alexander Petushko, Ilya Muromets, Sadko, and Alexander Ru, Marozka, Vasilisa the Beautiful. Russian poets, including Pyotr Yershov and Leonid Filatov, made a number of well-known poetical interpretations of the classical fairy tales, and in some cases, like that of Alexander Pushkin, also created fully original fairy tale poems of great popularity. Architecture Since the Christianization of Kievan Rus for several ages Russian architecture was influenced predominantly by the Byzantine architecture. Apart from fortifications, Kremlins, the main stone buildings of ancient Rus were Orthodox churches with their many domes, often gilded or brightly painted. Aristotle Fioravanti and other Italian architects brought Renaissance trends into Russia since the late 15th century, while the 16th century saw the development of unique tent-like churches culminating in St. Basil's Cathedral. By that time the onion dome design was also fully developed. In the 17th century, the fiery style of ornamentation flourished in Moscow and Yaroslavl, gradually paving the way for the Narishkin Baroque of the 1690s. After the reforms of Peter the Great the change of architectural styles in Russia generally followed that in the Western Europe. The 18th century taste for Rococo architecture led to the ornate works of Bartolomeo Ristrelli and his followers. The reigns of Catherine the Great and her grandson Alexander I saw the flourishing of neoclassical architecture, most notably in the capital city of St. Petersburg. The second half of the 19th century was dominated by the Neo-Byzantine and Russian revival styles. Prevalent styles of the 20th century were the Art Nouveau, Constructivism, and the Stalin Empire style. With the change in values imposed by communist ideology, the tradition of preservation was broken. Independent preservation societies, even those that defended only secular landmarks such as Moscow-based Oiri were disbanded by the end of the 1920s. A new anti-religious campaign, launched in 1929, coincided with collectivization of peasants, Destruction of churches in the cities peaked around 1932. A number of churches were demolished, including the Cathedral of Christ the Savior in Moscow. In Moscow alone losses of 1917 to 2006 are estimated at over 640 notable buildings, including 150 to 200 listed buildings, out of a total inventory of 3,500, some disappeared completely, 
others were replaced with concrete replicas. In 1955, a new Soviet leader, Nikita Khrushchev, condemned the excesses of the former academic architecture, and the late Soviet era was dominated by plain functionalism in architecture. This helped somewhat to resolve the housing problem, but created a large quantity of buildings of low architectural quality, much in contrast with the previous bright styles. In 1959 Nikita Khrushchev launched his anti-religious campaign. By 1964 over 10,000 churches out of 20,000 were shut down, mostly in rural areas, and many were demolished. Out of 58 monasteries and convents operating in 1959, only 16 remained by 1964. Of Moscow's 50 churches operating in 1959, 30 were closed and 6 demolished. Visual Arts Early Russian painting is represented in icons and vibrant frescoes, the two genres inherited from Byzantium. As Moscow rose to power, Theophanes the Greek, Dionysius and Andrei Rublev became vital names associated with a distinctly Russian art. The Russian Academy of Arts was created in 1757 and gave Russian artists an international role and status. Ivan Argunov, Dmitry Levitsky, Vladimir Borovikovsky and other 18th-century academicians mostly focused on portrait painting. In the early 19th century, when neoclassicism and romanticism flourished, mythological and biblical themes inspired many prominent paintings, notably by Karl Bryalov and Alexander Ivanov. In the mid-19th century the Berevizniki, Wanderers, group of artists broke with the academy and initiated a school of art liberated from academic restrictions. These were mostly realist painters who captured Russian identity in landscapes of wide rivers, forests, and birch clearings, as well as vigorous genre scenes and robust portraits of their contemporaries. Some artists focused on depicting dramatic moments in Russian history, while others turned to social criticism, showing the conditions of the poor and caricaturing authority. Critical realism flourished under the reign of Alexander II. Leading realists include Ivan Shishkin, Arkhip Gnji, Ivan Krimskoy, Vasily Polyanov, Isaac Levitan, Vasily Surikov, Viktor Vasnetsov, Ilya Rapin, and Boris Kustadiev. The turn of the 20th century saw the rise of symbolist painting, represented by Mikhail Vrubel, Kuzma Petrov Vodkin, and Nicholas Rurik. The Russian avant garde was a large, influential wave of modernist art that flourished in Russia from approximately 1890 to 1930. The term covers many separate, but inextricably related art movements that occurred at the time, namely neo primitivism, suprematism, constructivism, rayonism, and Russian futurism. Notable artists from this era include El Lysitsky, Kazimir Moyevich, Vasily Kandinsky, and Mark Chagall. Since the 1930s the revolutionary ideas of the avant-garde clashed with the newly emerged conservative direction of socialist realism. Soviet art produced works that were furiously patriotic and anti-fascist during and after the Great Patriotic War. Multiple war memorials, marked by a great restrained solemnity, were built throughout the country. Soviet artists often combined innovation with socialist realism, notably the sculptors Vera Mukina, Yevgeny Vashetish, and Ernst Nisvesny. Music and Dance Music in 19th century Russia was defined by the tension between classical composer Mikhail Glinka along with other members of the Mighty Handful, who embraced Russian national identity and added religious and folk elements to their compositions, and the Russian musical society led by composers Anton and Nikolai Rubinsteins, which was musically conservative. The later tradition of Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, one of the greatest composers of the Romantic era, was continued into the 20th century by Sergei Rachmaninoff. World-renowned composers of the 20th century include Alexander Skryabin, Igor Stravinsky, Sergei Prokofiev, Dmitry Shostakovich, and Alfred Shnitka. Russian conservatories have turned out generations of famous soloists. Among the best known are violinists Yasha Heifetz, David Doistrock, Leonid Kogan, Gideon Kramer, and Maxim Vengerov, cellists Mstislav Rostropovich, Natalia Gutman, Pianists Vladimir Horowitz, Spiatist Lav Richter, Emil Gilels, Vladimir Sofronitsky and Yevgeny Kissin, and vocalists Fyodor Shalyapin, Mark Ryzen, Elena Obrazsova, Tamara Sinyovskaya, Nina Dorlik, Galina Vishnevskaya, and Anna Trebko, and Dmitry Vorostovsky. During the early 20th century, Russian ballet dancers Anna Pavlova and Vaslov Nijinsky rose to fame, and impresario Sergei Agilov and his ballet's Rus travels abroad profoundly influenced the development of dance worldwide. 
Soviet ballet preserved the perfected 19th century traditions, and the Soviet Union's choreography schools produced many internationally famous stars, including Galina Ilonova, Maya Plisetskaya, Rudolf Nureyev, and Mikhail Baryshnikov. The Bolshoi Ballet in Moscow and the Marinsky Ballet in St. Petersburg remain famous throughout the world. Modern Russian rock music takes its roots both in the Western rock and roll and heavy metal, and in traditions of the Russian bards of the Soviet era, such as Vladimir Vysotsky and Bulat Okudzava. Popular Russian rock groups include Mashina Vrimini, DDT, Aquarium, Alisa, Kino, Kipilov, Nautilus Pompilius, Aria, Grazinskaya Abrona, Splium, and Coral Ishut. Russian pop music developed from what was known in the Soviet times as estrada into full-fledged industry, with some performers gaining wide international recognition, such as Tattoo, New Virgos, and Vetus. Literature and Philosophy In the 18th century, during the era of Russian Enlightenment, the development of Russian literature was boosted by the works of Mikhail Lomonosov and Denis von Bizum. By the early 19th century a modern national tradition had emerged producing some of the greatest writers in Russian history. This period, known also as the Golden Age of Russian Poetry, began with Alexander Pushkin, who is considered the founder of the modern Russian literary language and often described as the Russian Shakespeare. Doubt it continued with the poetry of Mikhail Lermontov and Nikolai Nekrasov, dramas of Alexander Ostrovsky and Anton Chekhov, and the prose of Nikolai Gogol and Ivan Turgenev. Leo Tolstoy and Fyodor Dostoevsky have been described by literary critics as the greatest novelists of all time. By the 1880s, the age of the great novelists was over, and short fiction and poetry became the dominant genres. The next several decades became known as the Silver Age of Russian poetry, when the previously dominant literary realism was replaced by symbolism. Leading authors of this era include such poets as Valery Bryusev, Vyacheslav Ivanov, Alexander Bloch. Nikolai Gumilyev, and Anna Akhmatova, and novelists Leonid Andreev, Ivan Bunin, and Maxim Gorky. Russian philosophy blossomed in the 19th century, when it was defined initially by the opposition of Westernizers, who advocated Western political and economical models, and Slavophiles, who insisted on developing Russia as a unique civilization. The latter group includes Nikolai Danilevsky and Konstantin Leontiev the founders of Eurasianism. In its further development Russian philosophy was always marked by a deep connection to literature and interest in creativity, society, politics and nationalism, Russian cosmism and religious philosophy were other major areas. Notable philosophers of the late 19th and the early 20th centuries include Vladimir Solovyev, Sergei Bulgakov, and Vladimir Vernadsky. Following the Russian Revolution of 1917 many prominent writers and philosophers left the country, including Bunin, Vladimir Nabokov, and Nikolai Berdyaev, while a new generation of talented authors joined together in an effort to create a distinctive working-class culture appropriate for the new Soviet state. In the 1930s censorship over literature was tightened in line with the policy of socialist realism. In the late 1950s restrictions on literature were eased and by the 1970s and 1980s, writers were increasingly ignoring official guidelines. Leading authors of the Soviet era include novelists Yevgeny Zamyatin, Emigrated, Ilfin Petrov, Mikhail Bulgakov, Censored, and Mikhail Shalohev, and poets Vladimir Mayakovsky, Yevgeny Yevtushenko, and Andrei Vosensensky. The Soviet Union was also a major producer of science fiction, written by authors like Arkadian Boris Strugatsky. Kir Bulachov, Alexander Belayev, and Ivan Yefremov. Traditions of Russian science fiction and fantasy are continued today by numerous writers. Cinema, Animation and Media Russian and later Soviet cinema was a hotbed of invention in the period immediately following 1917, resulting in world-renowned films such as The Battleship Potemkin by Sergei Eisenstein. Eisenstein was a student of filmmaker and theorist Lev Kuleshov, who developed the Soviet montage theory of film editing at the world's first film school, the All Union Institute of Cinematography. Zika Vertov, whose Kino Glass, Film Eye, theory, that the camera, like the human eye, is best used to explore real life, had a huge impact on the development of documentary filmmaking and cinema realism. The subsequent state policy of socialist realism somewhat limited creativity, however, many Soviet films in this style were artistically successful including Chibaif, The Cranes Are Flying, and Ballad of a Soldier. 
The 1960s and 1970s saw a greater variety of artistic styles in Soviet cinema. Eldar Ryazanov's and Leonid Gaidai's comedies of that time were immensely popular, with many of the catchphrases still in use today. In 1961-68 Sergei Bondarchuk directed an Oscar-winning film adaptation of Leo Tolstoy's epic War and Peace, which was the most expensive film made in the Soviet Union. In 1969, Vladimir Motil's White Son of the Desert was released, a very popular film in the genre of Ostern. The film is traditionally watched by cosmonauts before any trip into space. Russian animation dates back to late Russian Empire times. During the Soviet era, Soismult Film Studio was the largest animation producer. Soviet animators developed a great variety of pioneering techniques and aesthetic styles, with prominent directors including Ivan Ivanovano, Fyodor Hitruk, and Alexander Tatarsky. Many Soviet cartoon heroes such as the Russian style Winnie the Pooh, Cute Little Chiboroshka, Wolf and Hare from New, Pogodi, are iconic images in Russia and many surrounding countries. The late 1980s and 1990s were a period of crisis in Russian cinema and animation. Although Russian filmmakers became free to express themselves, state subsidies were drastically reduced, resulting in fewer films produced. The early years of the 21st century have brought increased viewership and subsequent prosperity to the industry on the back of the economic revival. Production levels are already higher than in Britain and Germany. Russia's total box office revenue in 2007 was $565 million, up 37% from the previous year. In 2002 the Russian arc became the first feature film ever to be shot in a single take. The traditions of Soviet animation were developed recently by such directors as Alexander Petrov and studios like Melnitsa Animation. While there were few stations or channels in the Soviet time, in the past two decades many new state and privately owned radio stations and TV channels have appeared. In 2005 a state-run English-language Russia Today TV started broadcasting, and its Arabic version Raya al Yam was launched in 2007. Censorship and media freedom in Russia has always been a main theme of Russian media. Sports Soviet and later Russian athletes have always been in the top four for the number of gold medals collected at the Summer Olympics. Soviet gymnasts, track and field athletes, weightlifters, wrestlers, boxers, fencers, shooters, cross-country skiers, biathletes, speed skaters and figure skaters were consistently among the best in the world, along with Soviet basketball, handball, volleyball and ice hockey players. The 1980 Summer Olympics were held in Moscow while the 2014 Winter Olympics were hosted in Sochi. Although ice hockey was only introduced during the Soviet era, the Soviet Union national team managed to win gold at almost all the Olympics and World Championships they contested. Russian players Valery Karlamov, Sergei Makarov, Vyacheslav Fedosov and Vladislav Treshek hold four of six positions in the EE team of the century. Russia has not won the Olympic ice hockey tournament since the unified team won gold in 1992. Russia won the 1993, 2008, 2009, 2012 and the 2014 EF World Championships. The Continental Hockey League, KHL, was founded in 2008 as a successor to the Russian Super League. It is ranked the top hockey league in Europe as of 2009, and the second best in the world. It is an international professional ice hockey league in Eurasia and consists of 29 teams, of which 21 are based in Russia and 7 more are located in Latvia, Kazakhstan, Belarus, Finland, Slovakia, Croatia, and China. KHL is on the fourth place by attendance in Europe. Bandy, also known as Russian hockey, is another traditionally popular ice sport. The Soviet Union won all the Bandy World Championships for men between 1957-79 and some thereafter too. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Russia has continuously been one of the most successful teams, winning many world championships. Association football is one of the most popular sports in modern Russia. The Soviet national team became the first European champions by winning Euro 1960. Appearing in four FIFA World Cups from 1958 to 1970. Lev Yashin is regarded as one of the greatest goalkeepers in the history of football, and was chosen on the FIFA World Cup Dream Team. The Soviet national team reached the finals of Euro 1988. In 1956 and 1988, the Soviet Union won gold at the Olympic football tournament. Russian club CSKA Moscow and Zunyit St. Petersburg won the UEFA Cup in 2005 and 2008. The Russian national football team reached the semi-finals of Euro 2008 
losing only to the eventual champions Spain. Russia was the host nation for the 2018 FIFA World Cup. The matches were held from 14 June to July 15, 2018 in the stadiums of 11 host cities located in the European part of the country and in the Ural region. This was the first football World Cup ever held in Eastern Europe, and the first held in Europe since 2006. Russia will also host games of Euro 2020. In 2007, the Russian national basketball team won the European Basketball Championship. The Russian basketball club PBCCSKA Moscow is one of the top teams in Europe, winning the EuroLeague in 2006 and 2008. Larissa Latinina, who currently holds the record for the most gold Olympic medals won by a woman, established the USSR as the dominant force in gymnastics for many years. Today, Russia is the leading nation in rhythmic gymnastics with Yevgenia Kanyeva. Double 50 meters and 100 meters freestyle Olympic gold medalist Alexander Popov is widely considered the greatest sprint swimmer in history. Russian synchronized swimming is the best in the world, with almost all gold medals at Olympics and World Championships having been swept by Russians in recent decades. Figure skating is another popular sport in Russia, especially pair skating and ice dancing. With the exception of 2010 and 2018 a Soviet or Russian pair has won gold at every Winter Olympics since 1964. Since the end of the Soviet era, tennis has grown in popularity and Russia has produced a number of famous players, including Maria Sharapova. In martial arts, Russia produced the sport samba and renowned fighters, like Fedor Yemelyanenko. Chess is a widely popular pastime in Russia, from 1927. Russian grandmasters have held the World Chess Championship almost continuously. The 2014 Winter Olympics were held in Sochi in the south of Russia. In 2016 the McLaren report found evidence of widespread state-sponsored doping and an institutional conspiracy to cover up Russian competitors' positive drug tests. As of December 1, 2017 25 athletes are disqualified, 11 medals are stripped. Formula One is also becoming increasingly popular in Russia. In 2010 Vitaly Petrov of Vibrik became the first Russian to drive in Formula One, and was soon followed by a second, Daniil Kvyat, from Ufa, in 2014. There had only been two Russian Grands Prix, in 1913 and 1914, but the Russian Grand Prix returned as part of the Formula One season in 2014, as part of a six-year deal. Russia has the most Olympic medals stripped for doping violations, 51, the most of any country, four times the number of the runner-up and more than a third of the global total, and 129 athletes caught doping at the Olympics, also the most of any country. From 2011 to 2015, more than a thousand Russian competitors in various sports, including summer, winter, and Paralympic sports, benefited from a state-sponsored cover-up, with no indication that the program has ceased since then. National Holidays and Symbols There are seven public holidays in Russia, except those always celebrated on Sunday. Russian New Year traditions resemble those of the Western Christmas, with New Year trees and gifts, and Dead Moroz, Father Frost, playing the same role as Santa Claus. Orthodox Christmas falls on 7th of January, because the Russian Orthodox Church still follows the Julian calendar, and all Orthodox holidays are 13 days after Western ones. Two other major Christian holidays are Easter and Trinity Sunday. Korban by Ram and Araza by Ram are celebrated by Russian Muslims. Further Russian public holidays include Defender of the Fatherland Day, 23rd of February, which honors Russian men, especially those serving in the army, International Women's Day, 8th of March, which combines the traditions of Mother's Day and Valentine's Day, Spring and Labor Day, 1st of May, Victory Day, 9th of May, Russia Day, 12th of June, and Unity Day, 4th of November, commemorating the popular uprising which expelled the Polish occupation force from Moscow in 1612. Victory Day is the second most popular holiday in Russia, it commemorates the victory over Nazi Germany and its allies in the Great Patriotic War. A huge military parade, hosted by the President of Russia, is annually organized in Moscow on Red Square. Similar parades take place in all major Russian cities and cities with the status Hero City or City of Military Glory. Popular non-public holidays include Old New Year, the New Year according to the Julian calendar on 14th of January, Tatiana Day, Students' Holiday on 25th of January, Maslenitsa, a pre-Christian spring holiday a week before the Great Lent, Cosmonautics Day, in tribute to the first human trip into space, Ivan Kupala Day, another pre-Christian holiday on 7th of July, 
and Peter and Fevronia Day, which takes place on 8th of July and is the Russian analogue of Valentine's Day, focusing, however, on family love and fidelity. State symbols of Russia include the Byzantine double-headed eagle, combined with St. George of Moscow in the Russian coat of arms. The Russian flag dates from the late Tsardom of Russia period and has been widely used since the time of the Russian Empire. The Russian anthem shares its music with the Soviet anthem, though not the lyrics. The imperial motto God is with us and the Soviet motto proletarians of all countries, unite, are now obsolete and no new motto has replaced them. The hammer and sickle and the full Soviet coat of arms are still widely seen in Russian cities as a part of old architectural decorations. The Soviet red stars are also encountered, often on military equipment and war memorials. The red banner continues to be honored, especially the banner of victory of 1945. The Matryoshka doll is a recognizable symbol of Russia, and the towers of Moscow Kremlin and St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow are Russia's main architectural icons. Chibarashka is a mascot of the Russian National Olympic team. St. Mary, St. Nicholas, St. Andrew, St. George, St. Alexander Nevsky, St. Sergius of Radonese and St. Seraphim of Surafa are Russia's patron saints. Chamomile is the national flower, while birch is the national tree. The Russian bear is an animal symbol and Mother Russia a national personification of Russia, though the bear image has a Western origin and Russians themselves have accepted it only fairly recently. Tourism Tourism in Russia has seen rapid growth since the late Soviet period, first domestic tourism and then international tourism, fueled by the rich cultural heritage and great natural variety of the country. Major tourist routes in Russia include a journey around the Golden Ring theme route of ancient cities, cruises on the big rivers like the Volga, and long journeys on the famous Trans-Siberian Railway. In 2013, Russia was visited by 28.4 million tourists, it is the ninth most visited country in the world and the seventh most visited in Europe. The number of Western visitors dropped in 2014. The most visited destinations in Russia are Moscow and St. Petersburg, the current and former capitals of the country. Recognized as world cities, they feature such world-renowned museums as the Tretyakov Gallery and the Hermitage, famous theaters like Bolshoi and Marinsky, ornate churches like St. Basil's Cathedral, Cathedral of Christ the Savior, St. Isaac's Cathedral and Church of the Savior on Blood, impressive fortifications like the Kremlin and Peter and Paul Fortress, beautiful squares and streets like Red Square, Palace Square, Tverskaya Street, Nevsky Prospect, and Arbat Street. Rich palaces and parks are found in the former imperial residences in suburbs of Moscow, Kolomensky, Tsaritsyno, and St. Petersburg, Peterhof, Strolna, Iranium Bem, Gatchina, Pavlovsk and Tsarskoy Selo. Moscow displays Soviet architecture at its best, along with modern skyscrapers, while St. Petersburg, nicknamed Venice of the North, boasts of its classical architecture, many rivers, canals and bridges. Kazan, the capital of Tatarstan, shows a mix of Christian Russian and Muslim Tatar cultures. The city has registered a brand the third capital of Russia, though a number of other major cities compete for this status, including Novosibirsk, Yekaterinburg, and Nizhny Novgorod. The warm subtropical Black Sea coast of Russia is the site for a number of popular sea resorts, like Sochi, the follow-up host of the 2014 Winter Olympics. The mountains of the northern Caucasus contain popular ski resorts such as Dombay. The most famous natural destination in Russia is Lake Baikal, the Blue Eye of Siberia. This unique lake, the oldest and deepest in the world, has crystal clear waters and is surrounded by taiga-covered mountains. Other popular natural destinations include Kamchatka with its volcanoes and geysers, Karelia with its lakes and granite rocks, the snowy Altai Mountains, and the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains, and the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains, and the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains, and the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains, and the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains, and the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains, and the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains. And the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains. And the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains. And the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains. And the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains. And the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains. And the wild steppes of Tuva. We Altai Mountains. 